بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to our 10th lesson of our simplified Tajweed series which is a series of Tajweed lessons introduced by Quran University uniquely designed Quran learning management system with the purpose of introducing Tajweed in a modern and easy approach. Through this series of lessons you'll be introduced to Tajweed rules using a unique, modern and innovative approach to teach Tajweed utilizing the color codes of Mus'haf al-Tajweed as a common denominator to link between those lessons and Tajweed rules. With such approach we aim to make the understanding of Tajweed rules much easier and help you to practically apply those rules while reading the Quran. So let's start Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim with our topic for this lesson which is Idram with Ghunna for Nun Sakinah and Tanween. And the name in Arabic is Al-Idram bi Ghunna li Nun Sakinah wa Tanween. In this lesson we'll be learning to apply the Tajweed definition of Ghunna, Idram and then the combined definition of Idram with Ghunna. Then we're going to indicate and realize which letters meeting with the Nun Sakinah would require the application of the Idram with Gunna Tajweed rule. Then we're going to revise the relationship between Tanween and Nun Sakina. And then we're going to take examples of Idram with Gunna for Nun Sakina and Tanween. And we're going to practice what we have learned by extracting cases of Idram of Nun Sakina or Tanween from the Quran and apply Tajweed rules on them. And we'll start by defining the color used in Mus'haf al-Tajweed for Idram with Gunna, which is the color green. In our Qur'an learning management system, whether we're using the desktop version or the mobile version, in both cases, we use the Uthman script of Medina Mus'haf with Tajweed color codes, which we call Qawaidu Alwani Tajweed, where every Tajweed rule, hukum, is given a unique color code. The objective of these color codes is to alert us to the presence of Tajweed rules while reading the Qur'an. And among the colors used in this Tajweed color legend, we'll find the color green, which indicates the hiding ikhfa and ghunna, nasal tone, ikhfa al ghunna. And if we look into this page for a color green, looking for two converging letters, one of them is nun sakina or tenuin, followed by a letter given the color green, we'll find this one here, qawman musrifin. Qawman musrifin is basically a tenuin, followed by the letter mim, and let's examine the colors here. The meme itself is given the color green, indicating the ghunna, giving this a nasal tone, muwaqi al ghunna. And the tanween itself is being in gray because the noon of the tanween will be not pronounced during idram, indicating idram wa malayufa, merger, idram, and non pronounceable. So we have two color codes actually the ghunna given the color green, and the tanween itself is given the color gray. And that's basically our lesson for today, which is the merger of two letters together while maintaining a nasal tone, which gives us the color green, and the idram itself, the merger, which is given the color gray. So our lesson for today is idram with ghunna for the nun sakna and tenween, with the ghunna being indicated by the color green. Now, what's tenween and what's the relationship of tenween and nun sakina? As we said, nun sakina is basically one of the letters of the alphabet with a sukun with still no haraka. Now the tenween, it is an extra nun sakina added to the end of a name, any name. And it's written in the format of duplicate fatha or duplicate kasra or duplicate dhamma. So there are three types of tenween. Tenween with fatha, tenween with kasr, tenween with dham. And the example is as we see here for the word kitab. Kitab is a book. Now a book with tenween uh, fatha Kitaban or Kitabun Tanween Dham or Kitabin Tanween with Kasr uh, duplicate Fatha, duplicate Dhamma, duplicate Kasra, and it is pronounced like this Kitaban, Kitabun, Kitabin. So basically, after the word Kitab, there is a Nun Sakina with a Fatha on the last letter of Kitab, and that's Tanween Fatha. So Nun Sakina is basically a part of tanween. So tanween, the word tanween means adding a noon. Noon tanween. So thus we conclude that the tanween adds a noon sakina to the end of the word and accordingly same rules of tajweed that applies for the noon sakina would automatically applies for the tanween. 
In the previous introduction about non sacking and tenuin, we mentioned that there are four rules, four possible tajweed rules that would arise from the non sakina or tenuin convergence, meaning meeting with another letter of the alphabet. And those four possible rules were iqlab, idram, idhar, and ikhfa. And we said that the rule would be based on the letter that follows the non sakina and tenuin. And in the case of a club, that letter would be the ba. And in case of a drum, there would be either those letters in green or the letters in gray. And we said uh, if we have the ya, nun, mim, and wow, it will be an idram with runna. And it is mentioned in the green letters of the world year maloon. While in the case of lam and ra, it would be idram without runna, which in turn is represented by the gray letters of the same world year maloon. Then we talked about idhar saying that it has six letters and then we talked about ikhfa and we said that it would be related to the rest of the letters of the alphabet in this lesson we're going to concentrate on the idram and in particular the idram with runna element of the idram of nun sakina and tanween in the introduction to the rules of nun sakina and tanween we gave an example on idram idram means assimilation or merger and in the example we have given Min Rabbihim, we can merge the two letters into one. So instead of saying Min Rabbihim, where each of the two letters, the Nun and Ra, are spelled clearly and independently, the Nun would be totally merged into the Ra. And that will make the Nun disappear. So instead of saying Min Rabbihim, we'll say Mir Rabbihim. No Nun would be pronounced, only a Ra, and the Ra will be like duplicate Ra. It has Shadda. Mir Rabbihim instead of Min Rabbihim. Mir Rabbihim. So, meeting of a still noon with a vowelized ra or any of those letters. These letters would also have the same rule of idram. Would result in idram, merger of the noon into the following letter, which is a ra in this case. And with that example in mind, we can now understand the definition of idram. Linguistically, idram means assimilation or a merger of two things together. While in Tajweed uh, applied definition, uh, it means the merging of two converging meeting letters, the first being still has sukun, and the second is vowelized as haraka, resulting in a single united stressed letter similar to the second in nature in terms of its articulation and characteristics. And now let's define runna or nasalization. The linguistic definition is that it is a sound that is emitted from the nasal passages without any function of the tongue. These are the nasal passages or what we call al khaychou in Arabic. And the applied Tajweed definition states that runna is a characteristic of letters. It's a nasalized sound emitted from the nasal passages and it is a characteristic of some letters. And such characteristic could be either an intrinsic one or an incidental one. So what's the difference between the two? If you remember that when we discussed the characteristics of letters, that we have divided those characteristics into two major categories, intrinsic basic ones, and we define these as the characteristics that always were associated with the letter, and they are part of the intrinsic makeup of the letter. And we mentioned that the incidental conditional Characteristics are those characteristics that might be associated with the letter in certain occasions and not in other occasions. And as we see here, gunna can be an intrinsic characteristic and gunna can be an incidental characteristic. Let's take an example, the noon and meme letters. For noon and meme, gunna is a characteristic that is always associated with the pronunciation of these letters in all their conditions. And that's why we call that an intrinsic characteristic, a basic one. While in some cases you tend to probably exaggerate the gunna of the nun and meme or give the gunna to a letter other than the nun and meme, which naturally shouldn't be having the gunna. And uh, in that case, we call that exaggeration as an incidental characteristic. So if we put together what we have learned about idram and gunna, idram being the merger of two letters, one vowelized and one still, into a single stressed letter similar to the second in nature, and the gunna being a nasalization characteristic of meme and noon generated as they pass through their nasal passage articulation, putting those two together would give us the definition of idram with runna, which will be 
the merger of a still mim or noon with a second vowelized letter mutahharrik into a single stressed letter similar to the second in nature, which is in fact the definition of a dram, while preserving the nasalization characteristic of the mim and noon, which is practically the definition of ghunna. And to conclude, a dram with ghunna is defined as a merger with ghunna, with a nasal tone, that happens for the noon sakina when there is a meeting of two letters, first letter is a noon sakina, and the second is any alphabet letter within two successive words or within the same single word. While for tenween, it happens exactly the same, a meeting of two letters, first letter is a still noon of the tenween, and the second is any alphabet letter but within two successive words. The tenween only happen within two successive words because tenween only occur at the end of the first word, so it can never have the idram within a single word. It should have it with the following successive word. Now, if such meeting occurs, what should be the rule? The rule would be merging the noon, sakina, whether the single one or that one of tenween, into the following letter, if the letter is one of those four letters merged or uh, gathered into the word yenmu, while maintaining the gunna characteristic of the noon. Example, min, nun sakina, followed by waw, waq, waw with fatha. We merge them together. Min, waq, we get a waw with shadda, yet maintaining the gunna of the noon. Min, waq, instead of min, waq. So we merge the noon into the waw with the ghunna being maintained. Now we'll illustrate what we have just learned by giving examples. And the examples will be given for both still noon and for the tenween on the right side. And the examples will be related to the four idram with ghunna letters for the noon sakin and tenween, which is the ya, noon, mim, and waw. We'll start with the first one, men yaqul. Men Yaqul. There is a noon sakina in red here with sukun, and there is a ya with fatha. So to pronounce them independently, it will be men yaqul. If we take the adram, it will sounds like may ya may ya. So there is a ya with shadda, and the noon has disappeared. We don't write it this way. This is the way we pronounce it. So it's pronounced as Mayakul. Mayakul. Try to repeat with me. Mayakul. Instead of Men Yakul. Second example is a noon sakina with a noon. Min Nemetin. Min noon sakina followed by a, another noon but with haraka, with kasra here. So it will be combined, merged together. Min ni'matin, pronounced as min ni'matin. Third example, min ma'. The meme is the idram letter. So, nun sakina with a meme with haraka, with a fatha, combined, merged together, min ma', pronounced as min ma'. Third or fourth example is with the waw, min waq. Noon sakina with a waw with fatha. Miwaq. Miwaq. Now we'll proceed to the examples of tenween. First one, wujuhun yawma idhin. Wujuhun. This tenween, ha, is with a double waw with ab on top of it, or this sign representing tenween of bam, followed by a ya with fatha. Wujuhuyya. Wujuhuyya yawma idhin. Next one, Yawma Idhin Naima, a noon with Tanween. Yawma Idhin, Dal with Tanween of Kasr, with a noon with Fatih. Yawma Idhin Naima. Yawma Idhin Naima. Next one, Naimatin Minna. Naimatin, Tanween with Fatih, followed by a meme with Kasra. Ni'matin minna. Ni'matin minna. And the last example, a wow with tenween. Adabun wasib. Adabun wasib. We have a tenween with bum with a wow with fatha. 
When we merge them together, it will look like or sounds like عذابو واصب عذابو واصب And now it's time for practice where we apply what we have just learned into selected verses of the Quran where we're going to extract the idgham with Ghunna and conclude the related tajweed rule from the verses shown here. Please notice that the Ghunna is reflected with the color green so the second letter of idgham with Ghunna is always in green. So once we, once we search here for example, min nabiyin, min nabiyin, we realize that the nun sakina is in black, but the merged second uh, letter, uh, the nun, is in green. Min nabiyin, min nabiyin, min nabiyin. Second, another min nabiyin, and mahdaw waj'al, mahdaw waj'al. Again, the tanween is in gray color here, and the waw, which is the uh, letter following the tanween, is in green, indicating that it is in the drum of the tanween into the waw with unna. More examples. Khayrun min. Khayrun min. Tanween. Now it's in gray, indicating idram merger. Min indicating runna, so a combination of idram and runna. Khayrum min muhinun wala muhinun wala tanween with wow. Is aswiratum min aswiratum min tum min nun wala rum min khayrum min muhinun wala min. All those cases are examples of idram followed by a letter of unna, and so it's idram with unna for the tenwi. In the whole Quran, there is an exception for the following four letters. In those four letters, although there is a still nun, nun sakina, dunya, qinwan, sinwan, bunyan, there is a nun sakina here, beating is supposed to be a dram letter, like the ya the wow and the ya yeah, within a single word, yet in these four letters only, we do not apply a dram. What we do here, we shouldn't merge the two to make qiwan. Qiwan is wrong. So merging a dram of the noon into the wow in this case is wrong. The proper thing is to keep it exposed. The rule in those four words is idhar mutlaq, which means absolute exposure, idhar, showing off the noon rather than merging it. It should look like and sounds like qinwan, not qiwan. So we don't say duya, we say dunya, qinwan, sinwan, bunyan. No merger in those four words. Now we can summarize what we have learned into one page. We've said that the idram with hunna happens when there is the nun sakina or tenween meeting a vowelized letter, one of those four letters. And the rule is to merge them together and maintain the gunna. And the symbol given in Mus'haf al-Tajweed is the green color for the gunna. And the examples, we've given examples for both, for the still noon, noon sakina, and for the tanween, for the ya noon, mim, and wow, where we illustrated those examples in details during the lesson. And with that quick summary, we conclude our lesson on idram with gunna for noon sakina and tanween, which is reflected in Mus'haf al-Tajweed by a green color reflecting the gunna. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that بعونه وقدرته that the Quran Learning Management System برنامج الجامعة لحفظة كتاب الله would help you inshallah to improve your tajweed and improve your tilawa and help you in improving your recitation and help you if you want in memorizing the Quran and to help you understand the Quran in the proper way as we reach the end we ask المولى عز وجل أن يتقبل منا هذا العمل we ask Allah Almighty to accept this work from us and we ask you to make dua for those who participated in making this work come to life and reach you. Hoping you all the best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.